Okie dokie, time for a another adventure with Scotty and B. What are you doing, dude? Playing some more dragons. More dragons, that's what I'm talking about. Perfect timing, my friend. Oh, perfect yeah. timing. Oh, yeah. You know why it's perfect timing? Because this video right here that you're watching is sponsored by War Dragons. So thank you so much, War Dragons. Now, we you ask yourself, what is War Dragons? War Dragons is a real-time strategy video game where you build up guilds, you build up clans, you have dragons, and you're destroying all kind of cool stuff. There's like 150 different dragons to collect and breed in this game. And they all have different strengths and different, different attributes to them. So it's pretty awesome. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to check out the link in the description down below. Click it and you'll be able to download War Dragons for free. But guys, check out War Dragons. Hey, you know, we fish, we travel all the time, and here's what I love about uh, mobile video games like War Dragons, is it allows you to pass a little bit of time. We're on the road, we're driving a lot, I'm driving. If I'm driving, he's playing War Dragons. If he's driving, I'm playing War Dragons. So it's a pretty cool deal. Uh, again, check out the link down below. It's awesome. There's so many cool things you can do in this game. It's it's amazing. You can also invite your friends to join and attack other guilds. Oh yeah. Fortification frenzy, baby. Strengthen your base. Lumber consume will award points for yourself and your guild. And in the breeding events, you can use egg tokens to earn points and compete globally with other guilds. Guys, this game is really cool. So check it out again. Just check out the link down below start taking over the world and dominate. So thank you again to War Dragons. And you know what time it is now? It's not time to play War Dragons now. It is time to take you guys along on a unbelievable little fishing video we got for you, a special one. So enjoy, here you go. What's up guys? Got a really good tip for you buzzbait fishing you know in the summertime in the spring buzz baits are deadly really buzz baits work year-round as long as that water temperature is above 60 65 degrees there's lots of things to consider when you're buzz bait fishing what color buzz bait to throw what kind of rod to use what kind of line to use what type of trailer to put on the buzz bait and in this in this tip video I want to describe how I like to approach buzzbait fishing. I'm gonna give you some really cool little tips and hacks on buzzbait fishing that'll help you catch some more fish. So first, let's jump into a couple scenarios here. First of all, you have to evaluate what's going on. Are the bass feeding on bluegill? Or are they feeding on shad? Those are the two things you first have to evaluate. On this particular lake that I'm on right now, it's summertime, the fish are pretty much feeding on bluegill up on the banks and some schooling fish out off the bank but for the most part bluegill when that's the case I'm gonna fish buzz baits that are a little bit darker in color either a black or a green pumpkin type buzz bait I'm also gonna rig these things up a lot of times with a little soft plastic on the back of them you know your traditional buzz bait looks similar to this right here that's what most people think a buzz bait looks like just right there with a regular skirt on it and we'll talk about that here in a minute either white or black and that's a good one to start off with but again if you want to fine-tune it something like this that has a little creature bait on the back of it this is actually a little frog this particular buzz bait right here is what I'd consider a bigger buzz bait you look at the blade the blades big compared to this one this is more of your finesse buzz bait this is more of your make a lot of noise aggravate on buzz bait. Kind of depends on the lake you're fishing on too. Does the lake you're fishing on have a lot of pressure? Is there a lot of people throwing buzz baits? If so, you might want to finesse it just a little bit. But it's a totally different sound versus this one and I'll get into that here in a minute when we start throwing them. You'll hear this, the difference in the sound. But again, putting little creature baits on the back of them is something that a lot of the pros have been doing for several years now. And you know, again, you can throw a little little frog on the back of it. A lot of people like to put a horny toad on the back. Actually, I like using my bandito bug right here on the back of buzz baits. That works really well. It has a lot of extra action. It throws well, and uh, it imitates that bluegill. So that's uh, that's another way to do it. And that's again a little finessey one there. 
The other thing to consider is what kind of line do you fish with? Do you fish it on monofilament? Do you fish it on fluorocarbon? Or do you fish it on braid? I personally like throwing it on braid just because I can make a, a real long cast and if I get a bite, I can reel up real fast and usually drive that hook in pretty good. So I like throwing straight braid. These rods right here, all my buzzbait rods have braid on them. Um, I'm not worried about the fish seeing them because the buzzbait's churning through the water. You know, it's not a, it's, there's no reason to think that the fish is gonna see the line and shy away. This is 50 pound P-Line X braid rigged up on a favorite. I like a seven foot to a seven three rod. This is what these are. This is a heavy action here. Here's one of our pro battle rods that we're working on. This one's not out yet, but this is a seven foot. It's got a nice backbone to it, but a nice little tip. You want a little bit of tip. You don't want a broomstick because a lot of times with buzzbait, you're trying to get it close to the cover. You're trying to get it up underneath overhanging trees, throw it up beside a dock or underneath the overhanging uh, limb. So a little bit of backbone and a little bit of tip is important. Now, Let's get back into the buzzbaits again. What buzzbait to throw? So, right now here on this lake, I'm going to start off fishing this bigger buzzbait. First thing in the morning, not a lot of boat traffic. I'm going to fish this one a little bit, and I'm going to fish it with that little that little frog in the back, and I'm going to rotate between that as well as this one here, and just kind of see. Let the fish tell you what they want. I mean, you'll you'll know. So I'll make a few casts with this one, kind of see how it's running, and then I'll pick this one up and make a few casts and cruise around and see what I get going. That's basically what I'm going to do. Now, there's some things to know about a buzz bait, and I'm going to get into that when we start fishing, on how to tune a buzz bait and which direction you want to run the bank on. That's very important. A lot of people overlook that, which direction you run the bank on. So let's jump up. Let's go down this bank here. Let's make some casts, and let me explain to you all about buzz baits. Now, when you pull up on a bank, you have the first thing you have to ask yourself, too, is which way do I go? Do I go this way or do I go that way? Here's why that's an important question to ask yourself. As this blade turns in the water, it's going to push the buzz bait to the left. It's just the way this thing rotates. The direction the blade rotates drifts the bait to the left. So I want to go down the banks to the right and throw my bait against the bank. And so that's going to keep your bait in the strike zone longer versus if I went this way, my bait is constantly drifting off the bank or away from the shoreline. So I'm just going to make a long cast like that keep my rod tip up and that keeps that line up out of the water. It allows me to run that buzz bait a little bit slower. Now as it gets closer to the boat, I'll start dropping my rod tip down and not reeling it too fast. That's um, You really basically want to reel it just fast enough where it's still churning that water. Look at that thing. Look at it churning the water. Hopefully you guys can hear this buzz bait. I want you to hear this sound, okay? Hopefully you can hear it. Did you hear that sound? Did you hear that nice little chirpy kind of plop sound? That's really a very good sounding buzz bait. And the reason you need to understand what that sounds like is, as you catch fish on these buzz baits, they're going to get out of whack. These blades are going to get bent certain ways, and if they get bent flat or you step on the bait or make a bad cast and bang the blade off a dock real hard, it could get those blades out of whack. So it's basically you have to tune that buzz bait and make sure that those cups in that blade stay just like that and sometimes you have to just lightly very lightly tweak them just a little bit more if they get out of whack if you stop hearing that sound you need to start tweaking your buzz bait just a little bit but that that's a what I'd call a good sounding buzz bait right there all right this little buzz bait here is that little shad imitation that I was talking about it's against one of the finesse ones and I've taken a small little swim bait I like to put a little small swim bait on the back of it little boot tail gives those fish a little bit something more to kind of key in on adds a little bit of weight to the buzz bait which is good so it throws a little bit better and uh, and that's basically what I'm gonna rig up right there so I've seen a lot of little bait fish kind of scurrying out of the water when I've made casts so um, even though we caught a caught a couple fish on the creature bait imitation I think this could be a player as well especially when I get out here on the main lake areas where there's a little bit more shad so a couple little things that I like to do when I'm when I'm fishing this shad imitation is making sure that the skirt is trimmed up and not interfering with that tail. Very important. If you got too short uh, of a tail or too long of a skirt, it's going to interfere with that action. So you might want to trim it up just a little bit. Something to pay attention to. You know, when I'm looking to throw a buzz bait, you know, a lot of times I literally put the trolling motor down and just go, right? But I do want to kind of pick my targets, right? I want to say my high percentage 
places. My high percentage places are little points or seawalls like this. I love seawalls. Seawalls are important and here's why. The bass can sit out here in four and five or six foot of water and when the shad get between the bass and the wall, they'll pin them up against the seawall. So a lot of times I'll take this buzz bait and I'll literally throw it right down the edge of that seawall. And I really want to get as close to the seawall as I can. And that a lot of times is a great place to throw buzz baits in the morning because those fish again will pin that against the pin those fish against the wall. The other thing is I like the back of these little these little drains like this. A uh, little skinny little drain get in the back of it, find one little uh, tree branch or something in the water. You, know, you don't want a lot of cover. If it's just a cover everywhere, you know, it, it's sometimes not as good as finding these kind of bare banks like this and then there's one log in the water or one lay down tree or one little brush pile sticking out. A lot of times that's, that's what I call the high percentage places. And I'm just covering water. And a lot of times I'm just taking a mental note of where I'm seeing the bait fish too. You know, like right now I'm making casts and I don't see a whole lot of bait fish jumping out of the way. But here in a minute, I'm gonna see, you know, shad jumping or see some bluegill running up behind it. Start paying attention to where you're seeing the bait fish and, and, and try to duplicate those places around the lake. And that'll help you a lot. All right, another little tip for you, especially when you're doing the shad thing. Summertime, they're feeding on that real small little bait fish that size. This is a paddle tail on the back of this one right now, which works great. I like this one a lot. But there's times that I'll take this bait like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bite the head off just a little bit. I'm going to rig it right there. And the reason I'm going to rig it like that is I want a little bit more action. And the reason I bit that head off like that is it's blunt right there and that water is going to hit that and make that wiggle. So let's just see what it looks like in the water. Sometimes just a little bit of extra wiggle on that trailer will make those fish bite it. You can't see it. That little tail is wiggling. So this little tip right here is really key, especially when they're feeding on that small bait. Again, a little boot tail like we had on before, it does work really well. But again, sometimes you go to these little straight tail minnow imitations, put it on the shank of the hook like that, or actually in the bend of that hook. Let that thing do a lot of action, a lot of work, and, uh, and that's how you catch them on it. So guys, hopefully these couple tips on buzz bait fishing, on how to rig them up, a couple little things on tweaking them will help you catch more fish. So thanks for subscribing to the channel. And uh, hey, turn your notification on. Thank you for all the support. And drop some comments below and let me know what some of your favorite little trailers are to use. And also, what tips you'd like to see in the future. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. We'll see you. Boom!